Hello. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Knit Girls. It is September 18th, 2011, and this is episode 77. It's a lot of sevens. Lucky 77. 777. Um, so, obviously, I'm Leslie, also known as You Don't Call Me Less. I'm Laura, also known as Lala. And I'm Lynn, also known as Lynn Zem. And if the name sounds familiar, it's for two reasons. One, uh, Lynn is the sort of the, head, the person who headed the Make-A-Wish fundraiser that we, with your help, were able to raise over $8,000 for, so yay y'all. Thank you so much. It, it was an amazing summer. We had a lot of fun. Yeah. And uh, also, Lynn is going to be teaching spinning at SSK, so yay. you guys yay. get to kind of meet her. <laughs> you can actually meet, air quotations, two of our teachers because we interviewed Wendy pretty early on. Mm -hmm. And we're going to go see Wendy again in a couple months, so yeah. there's there that you too. So you could technically meet two of our teachers <laughs> um, via the interwebs. So two minutes in and we're already off track. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> so what is everybody knitting? Do you want to start? Sure. I'm knitting on a log cabin. Uh, it's going to be a baby blanket. So I this have is a new project, right? It, it is a new project. Okay. It is brand new. It was cast on Thursday night. <laughs> a night that shall remain in infamy. No, um, and what it is, it's classic elite sprout yarn, which is a super chunky yarn. Um, recommended needle size is 10, and I'm doing it on size 11s, 8.0 millimeters. I have to move it towards the middle a little, but I can't see. Uh, okay. There we go. There we go. Sorry. I didn't want to block this. We're not space. used to having it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just the center panel, and then I'll pick up... I have a bright green that's going to go on the outside, and then I have two more skeins of the pink that are going to go outside of that. And it's for my goddaughter, Alice, who will be born in November. So I'm super excited about that. And I'm very honored to be asked to be a godmother. It's always a great honor. So that's it for me. That's, that's all your work. That's on? the only thing on the needles right now. It is. Why are you going to be looking at me like that? <laughs> I finished two other things today. All right. All right, I'll believe you. Don't be a hater. What are you working on, Lynn? I am working on a pair of socks from Twisted Fiber Art, and this is the Scrabble colorway. I've actually finished the first sock. Ooh, that's so pretty. It is I love their colorways. red and blues, and um, this is the Playful yarn base, and it's my favorite of their yarn base. I also have, this is all 13 rows of <laughs> my, uh, Maple wing shawl. It's an Anne Hansen pattern, and this is in my hand spun. Mm -hmm. And we have to get a better close up of this. Oh, don't want to snag it. There. Oh. This is ridiculous in a good way. <laughs> Take a look at this. That's hand spun. And how fine it is. Two ply, a lace weight. Four ounces, and tell them how many yards you got. I got fifteen hundred yards. Um, the five Out of four ounces. <laughs> this took me seventeen hours to ply, so it was an epic spin, and so I had to make something gorgeous out of it. So I'm just trying to come in with my sweater, maple wing, <laughs> um, and it's a superwash merino. What was um, the fiber silk, initially? Um, superwash merino and silk base and it's um, dyed by poppy flower fiber. Oh, so, I love her stuff. And, so, and I don't know if she's dying anymore. I don't I think haven't she seen is. Her. I haven't seen her in forever. She but had some medical issues. It's gorgeous fiber. Beautiful. So, and this stuff just, it wanted to be spun into a two-ply lace weight. So, mine always wants to be spun <laughs> that way. It just doesn't work out. <laughs> Aww. So, that's what I have with me. There are lots of other things on the needles at home, but that's all we already made to. her like grab 15 <laughs> bags worth of stuff when she was flying in, so couldn't really add anything else to the She had to bring a whole bunch of pile. stuff for Camp Fluffy Fluff. Yes. yes. Um, okay, well I only have one thing on the needles, and that is the sweater that I swatched for last week. Once we were finished recording, I swatched again, and this time I swatched according to Jared Flood's um, swatching instructions in the round because the sweater's going to be knit in the round and gauge was still exactly the same spot on so it's a rare rare thing that my gauge swatches matched and i'm now into my third ball of the uh shepherd's wool that's cool and, and one of our listeners said it was they're coming out with a dk 
Yes, that the factory was close to her. Yeah. So this is the body. It's a bottom-up sweater, and it's based on Elizabeth Zimmerman's measurements. Um, her percentage system. Her percentage system, system. yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, I need it to be 19 inches before I can do anything else, and it is not 19 inches. Although I have knit like crazy on this thing this week, because this is one week's progress, and it's all stuck in it, except the bottom is ripped. So. And this, this is needles. on a signature, um, 4.0 millimeter, I think. Yeah, 4.0 millimeter, so it's a U.S. size 6. And um, on my third ball of yarn. And I'm using my Knit Girls bag. This is the prototype. And it is wee. <laughs> it is very <laughs> tiny. So uh, that's why I'm using it, because it wasn't good enough to send out. And that's it. That's all. That's all. all the needles. That's all the needles. Oh, but... The, uh, for the Make-A-Wish fundraiser, I offered to hand knit a pair of socks for someone, and the, the lady who won, is, we're, I'm working with her, and we finally gotten to a point where she's kind of picked out what she wants, so um, I'll be starting that this week at some point. So Awesome. And the Volmiza that was won is sitting in a chair over there. I haven't mailed it yet. <laughs> I haven't mailed mine. I noticed that when I came into the room. So if you're the winner, it is still getting out. I just haven't, I haven't mailed it yet, so that's my fault. Um, I have some finished objects. You did. Go ahead. Don't worry. My Monday morning cardigan. Yeah, yeah. You finished I got it. it done. It's got beautiful. it done Thursday afternoon. So, and all the ends woven in, and then it took a bath, and then it sat and dried for several days. <laughs> and then I wore it to Camp Plucky Fluff on Saturday. So. We took pictures at Jackie's. Um, yeah. House. She's got a very cool house. She has St. George and the Dragon, so... It was very fun to take photos there because it's so eclectic. We try to take photos. She's got an old photo booth that you can close it and the light comes on above. Well, it's, it's a phone there. booth. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Phone booth. Oh, but yeah, it's like old it. school style and you can close it and the light comes. It's really cute. But That's very cool. And we try to take photos there, but it was too dark. Um, other things that I've finished. I've finished the string theory socks. And the yarn was a gift to me from... Um, the lovely Seashore Sharon, and they are done. I bound off the heel today, the second heel, and the heels don't match, but that's fine. The socks match for the most part. Not that I care about matching. I'm not like that one. So those are done, and we'll probably get one this week. And then last but not least, Wool Pierogi asked that everyone get everything being knit for Baby Pierogi off the needles. <laughs> <laughs> so Baby Pierogi would so come. So Baby Pierogi can come. So Baby Pierogi is getting... A little hand spun hat. So cute. That is very cute. I wonder what yarn that, that was. was um, that was. Hand yeah, spun. it's hand spun. It was a Lorna's Laces Ice House, I believe, that I three plied and had um, used it for another project and had around 60 yards left over and knit it up on size 7. I have a 12 inch circular that I really like for baby hats and it's around 13 inches wide. And I just go to 5 inches tall then start decreasing. Do the little eye cord at the top. That's it. That's like my standard baby hat that I always do. You knit that in a day. I did. On the way to and from Camp Lucky Fluff. Yep. It's not a hard knit at all. It's a fun ride in the car knit. And that's it for me. Those three items. Lynn has lots of stuff. I have my Camp she Loopy does. project. So I thought that'd be fun to share. I have yeah. This was the project number one, the two color shawl. It's the um, Moody Kerchief. And the yarn in this was uh, three Irish girls... Cash Merino, it's the Glen Haven Worsted. It is awesome yarn. It's, it's very, so very soft. Very nice and very squishy. So that was project number one. And then I made mittens for project number two. They're the cabled uh, mittens, and the pattern is All the Water by Kristen Kapoor. And another of our teachers for us. <laughs> These, this is a fantastic pattern. I don't make mittens and I don't do cables. And so the fact that I actually enjoyed doing both was pretty impressive. And, and that was at a Malabrigo, right? Yes, it's Malabrigo Twist. So oh, that was yeah. a fun What colorway is that? Is it the purple, purple, purple haze? Purple mystery or purple? Okay. It's purple something. It's purple. It's purple. It's pretty. Um, so, got those done for winter, which will be fun. And then I have one more. Because Lynn lives in Colorado. Mm -hmm. yes. She actually gets winter. <laughs> and then my last project Whoa. was the My Wish shawl. And so, that is 
all done and blocked. Well, and I got to help it, block. <laughs> Laura and I, it was very last minute. I finished it on the plane coming out here on Thursday. Thursday so night, it yeah. was deadline knitting. I was getting text best. messages from Lynn like, we just landed in Memphis and I finished the job. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. And so it is made out of um, Tosh Merino Light. And the colorways are Robin's Egg and Van Dyke Brown. So pretty. I like those two together. It's All fun much. to knit. So that's what I have with me. Yay. That's a good bit of stuff with yeah. you. I didn't finish them all this week, obviously. <laughs> I'm not that But good. you're not holding yourself to a weekly show, so but that's I, all I'm good. I'm not around knitters very often, so I had to show show them off to people who would appreciate yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely. Leslie has a finished object. I do, because I was told that I needed to not be the only one without a finished object, so. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Um, all the cool kids had a finished object. The knit girl, well, duh. I'm never one of the cool kids, but I've accepted that. Um, the Knit Girls Afghan Square Swap is, uh, you're supposed to send out your squares by the 20th of September, if you're in this round. And I hadn't even started mine, but I started it this morning and I finished it this afternoon because um, we had a little bit of downtime during the class, the plucky fluff. So I used Malabrigo, Malabrigo, Rios. I always say that wrong. Rios, yeah, in the cocoa colorway. So it's just a really nice chocolate brown. It's my person liked earth tones. And um, I have to figure out which side's the front. Okay. I didn't weave in ends. I don't because um, I figure that the person who gets the square might use that to stick to seam it. So I, I leave them unwoven. It still hasn't been blocked yet. I'll do that tonight. So it's a simple basket weave square. Um, and it with just a little bit of block, and it's going to be 12 by 12. Right now it's about 11 by 11 and a half. So. Um, it needs to be 12 by 12 but simple basket weave stitch and it went really quickly and I think it has a really nice finished look so I'll block that later and on. And you tonight. did garter stitch on the outside right? I did I always do three rows of garter stitch at the bottom and three stitches of garter up the sides and then three rows of garter at the top just because I think it gives it a nice polished finish look. Mm -hmm. Yeah I agree. So that's my echo. Spinning. The majority of the show is going to be spinning because we went to Camp Plucky Fluff this weekend. Yes, with, with Lexi the, Boger. Mm -hmm, who has two books already out, one of which is out of print. And, and the other is intertwined. Yes. I don't remember the first, the name of the first book. Um, and then she's got a new one that's coming out next year. In January. And she was kind enough to do an interview with us and also demonstrate a technique that's going to be in that new book. But we have lots and lots of stuff. So the first thing I guess we can all kind of show off was we were doing coils and loosely plying and uh, adding little twisties out. So yeah, and, uh, thread plying. Yes, along thread with. plying along with it. So this is mine, and these were just some singles that had been on my bobbin for three or four years. So they weren't very energized, but they are now. <laughs> <laughs> and everything, um, my art yarn is not balanced. It really needs to be more balanced. But with practice, I think that'll come. So that's mine. And this one is mine. Leslie was nice enough to spin my singles for me. <laughs> it was a real hassle <laughs> with this wheel that she has. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty colors. Yes. Makes me think. I of like the blues. Like lemon lime or something. So all these were thread plied. Yes. yes. Um, this one is mine. I used some scarlet fleece roving. So I've got like little coils and then she had us to like I'm trying to find a loopy bit. I sucked at the loopy bit. I did too. Thing. <laughs> I just didn't have enough time. I won't be mine. teaching loopies in the spinning class <laughs> at <laughs> Oh, here's one. So it's basically it's like allowing the over twist to stay in the yarn. Mm -hmm. And just making just that flying right past feature. it, yeah. So I don't know how many yards I got, not a lot, because we were just playing. Yeah. So. And then what did we do after that? Did we... we did this one next. What yes. This one the, was? The, the Lumpy the Bumpy, Navajo. we made bats. Yeah, and the then Lumpy we Bumpy and the Navajo plot. Spun the singles Lumpy Bumpy and then we Navajo plied them. And so. we had to pick fiber that we didn't like the color, yes. and so she challenged us to try to work with different colors and so fibers. Different and textures. Yeah. And then spin it thick and thin on purpose. 
the Navajo play. So that's a lot. Like, orange. Not a color I typically mm-hmm. use. Yeah. What I have colors actually you orange typically was mine. Use? mine was yellow. Yellow. And where's your orange, Laura? Right there. That little bit right there. So. <laughs> and then I don't typically do, like, the salmons. Yeah. Any orangey shades are not my favorite. And there's some yellow in here, too. I think of what I spun in the class, this might be my favorite one. This is one of my favorites. Too. Yeah, I like this technique. It fun. In fact, it's crazy, it but again. it's actually usable to me. The and the carter we were using was a lot of fun, too. Yeah. That we used I figured out how to use a carter, and then it attacked me. <laughs> and I had singles from uh, the... That's the um, wool pierogi sent me, so I did the same thing. Max said it's been a little bit thick and thin. Because I'm an overachiever, and I have to do things <laughs> more than once. And I want an empty bobbin, and this stuff's too pretty to sit on a bobbin. Like it has been for the past month while I knit on a sweater. <laughs> so there's that. Next, Oh, the little beehive things. Yeah, we learned the beehive. They weren't. What did she call them? Uh, no, no, they were, they were felt, not felt. They were um, color beads. Yes. Oh, I sucked at that. I don't have anything to show y'all. Sorry. I have that. I was terrible at those. I have. That. I was pretty terrible too, but it is way overspun. But it's these little. It's like adding the pops of color into. It's kind of like core spinning, just in that little section. Yeah, that's a good that example. That one's actually right a good one. <laughs> one of the few. Yeah. I sucked at this. I don't have anything to show you. <laughs> Mama Lemon was actually pretty she good. She was. Your mother's very patient with things. Uh-huh. Or at least she gives that appearance of being very patient. And then the last thing we did yesterday was adding beads, adding uh Felt, little felt balls, balls, just little add-in sequins. I added some sequins. Mine looks terrible, so yeah, I'm you're not even. <laughs> I'm not gonna show. Well, that's pretty highly energized. Let's see if I can find a sequins part. There's a sequins part right there. There's a felt nubby. That got some beads. In. So yeah. there's all that. And this was um, I used some of my Moonwood Farm that um, the butterfly Morpheus bag for this because I wanted to add in those little she uh, sent it with little add-ins mm-hmm, and pops balls. so I wanted to do that with the beads and I made those beads many many moons ago when I used to do lamp she has beads. A kiln. Yep, which sits unused in the attic like so many things <laughs> yeah <laughs> exactly so that was yesterday's stuff and then today we had to start off by doing an elastic core yarn that basically represented our brain. Yes. My brain is fuzzy and mottled. <laughs> <laughs> My brain is very colorful. And my gra- brain is just, um, again, the <laughs> Moonwood Farms <laughs> bat because I love it so much. It and then you can stretch, stretch it out and knit with it super stretch out. And when you spin it, you actually spin it with the, over uh, the elastic core with and the elastic stretched. is stretched to its full extent. So the concept um, behind this is just to, so that when you actually use it, um, it, it can be a design feature or one of the ladies who had taken the class before who was there taking it um, again used something like this at the top of a a bag so that it offered like it was instant closure Closure. because the yarn naturally drew in Um, you could make a baby hat and it would grow with the child for a while so yeah that's I couldn't put that because it's nice and And then we were core spinning without a core yarn Uh, that's beautiful. That's Thank lovely. you. I didn't realize we were doing that. It's been a long day, y'all. Okay. All right. Um, it's nice and soft. It is. Yeah. It's comfy. Um, what did we do? We did the mohair. We did the core spinning without the core. You were too busy doing your brain. I oh, sucked well, at that, oh, so yeah. I didn't do that. And that was basically drafting this way and then with that same fiber core spinning. And then twist fits. It was complicated. It was complicated, but it was kind of fun. Laura's looks pretty good. Mm -hmm. And then (laughs) we did the mohair. 
the little mohair angels. I did mohair -y. okay. And basically this is making a mohair bat and then spinning it, core spinning over like a novelty, like mine has, it's like a, pay, a rick rack yarn. Yeah. It's supposed to be really fuzzy. Into little mohair clouds above it. I'm not certain what I would ever use this for, but it is a really cool technique. It just Depends feels on, so yeah. delicate. Yours is way better than mine. Because Yours is very airy, fluffy. whereas mine is very dense. And the point is using a light mohair right. so that the um, colored yarn, the, the core, core that you've thing. used, can mm -hmm. shine through. It's a neat technique, I just don't know. This is the I only time I really it. think of mohair as like super soft. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't typically think of mohair as yeah. super soft. No, this is so soft. It's very pretty. pretty the like, the skin itself times. is very pretty. But I don't know what I would use it for. Angel wings. Run off and she angel doesn't wings. need new angel wings. Mine worked just fine. <laughs> oh, I lost it. A little crown. I'm going to knit you a tiara out of mine. That's super sweet. <laughs> that's why you're my knitting bee. Aww. That's so sweet. We did beehives too, but you skipped beehives. That was the last thing we did. Was it? Oh, no, we did the tail did spinning. Oh, see, we were interviewing Lexi while we okay. were trying to tail spinning. Oh, so that's, that's tail cool. spinning. That actually here. was very cool. It's like it's spinning the locks so. without... Yeah processing well without carding them and separating the fibers and so I spun these onto themselves so these this you, you were supposed to and it, it is a single it's just all twisty but it's you, very colorful mm -hmm. you spin just kind of the, the edge the cut edge of the lock and you leave the twisty curly end out of the twist and so you kind of spin around it it's kind it just of a, came out really nice yeah, it did. It's very colorful, and it's really overspun again. So you could make a clown wig out of that. I could. <laughs> be awesome. <laughs> a circus hat for Pearl. <laughs> and my cat would eat this. So not a good idea. No, probably not. But yeah. So that was so kind of fun. That. And then it was super coils. Super coils. Super coils. And mine is still on the wheel. Mine actually. I was, this technique was interesting and I, I enjoyed figuring out how to make it work for me. So it's essentially doing the bee, beehive thing, but constantly without allowing any, um, any thinner single or any thinner part of the fiber in there. So it's really super coily the whole way through. So you're applying it over a core. Right. And scooching it up constantly. Mm -hmm. And yours turned out really well. Oh, like I was club. having trouble with that. I couldn't. This was one of the techniques that I was okay she at. She didn't do it over the mohair. She did it over a smooth a, a thread. Okay. Yeah. She didn't do the technique that. I didn't do it the right way. Got it. Okay. So I did it a different way. Scooching. Yeah. No, I didn't do the roll. I sucked at the rolly thing that she was showing. Yeah, so I did the scooching. I Mama Linneman looked at me and said, "Just do the super coils the old way." And I'm like, "Like I know what the old <laughs> way is." <laughs> So she showed me, and then that is funny. I did. I'm getting significantly less knitting done on the show than I typically do. I don't really have knitting to do. I'm almost done with this, and I have to do the green. Okay, so that was our art yarn of Palooza. Yep. That was it. And then we did interview Lexi, um, but we're, that's going to be a separate thing because there's editing to be done. Um, and this is going to go up late enough as it is. Yep. <laughs> but I did want to have Lynn show you her awesome wheel, and I told myself I didn't need another wheel. And then I <laughs> spun on this wheel, and now I really want this wheel. So we're going to move this stuff so off the table. Yes, most definitely. Over here. And so Lynn Lynn likes shocked wheels. And, um, Why don't you tell them about the wheels you pre-existingly had? <laughs> <laughs> this is like a confessions yes. meeting. Um, I'm I, laying and I have a problem. I, have wheels. A problem. <laughs> I don't need any more wheels. I swear. So when I learned to spin, I was in Christchurch, New Zealand, and, and learned at the at the Christchurch Art Center, which is an amazing place, but unfortunately was really damaged in the earthquakes. Right. But had the lovely ladies of the Christchurch Spinners and Weavers Guild teach me and I went home that afternoon and bought a wheel online and so I have an Ashford Traveler and I paid $50 New Zealand which is about $35 US for that wheel. Oh, that, that is nothing. It was in 2007. Wow. So I, it was apparently people over there have lots of wheels in their, their basements and so I was very lucky and 
it was fun to get that home. Um, <laughs> so that was my first wheel, and then I took a class at Shuttle Spindles and Skeins, and um, that's in Boulder. That's in Boulder. It's a fantastic shop. Maggie Casey is one of the owners, and she's a brilliant spinning teacher. Feel very lucky to have had her as yeah. a mentor, and so bought a, a shacked matchless, which once I started spinning, realized that was the wheel I really wanted. And, and so I bought that. And then about a year later, they came out with the cherry matchless. And I which told myself, limited edition. I did not need another matchless. Well, you entered the contest to try to win I, it I first. I did. I did. And I didn't win it that way. And so... But you were one of the finalists, right? I was. Okay. One of my three plies was in that exhibition. And then... So I ordered a cherry matchless, and um, so I remember because I was on the bus with Lynn on the way to it was at Spring Fling on the way to Loopy, and she said, "Yeah, I ordered one of the cherry matchlesses. <laughs> I got the last one." Yeah, it was uh, it was meant to be. It was, yeah. and I love that wheel. It's it's definitely my favorite one to spin on. So I didn't need another wheel, and then Shaq came out with the sidekick, and so. And that's the, uh, the it's their travel wheel, right. and yep. Shaft is, has been working on this for a long time, and they it just came out this year, and so I decided I needed one, which was great because then Camp Fluff, Plucky Fluff came yeah. up, and so I've actually traveled with it, so it works. Out it was perfectly. definitely worth yeah. the money. <laughs> this is the first trip it's been on. So. Yes, and it traveled um, fantastically. It was it fits up in the overhead bin, although. When you if you travel with it, I would definitely check with the airline to make sure that the sizes are. I traveled AirTran, and it, it probably it varies by airline. Worked great. I, I did um, pay the extra ten dollars to board early, mm -hmm. so that I made sure I had an overhead bin. But um, you want to show it? Yeah, go for it. Oof. I want to keep it. <laughs> so this is. Is that, can you see? Yeah. Um, so this is my bag that I traveled with. It's um, from Bountiful, which is an online store in Colorado. It's separate from the purchase of the sign. Yes. yes. And so, but if you're thinking about traveling with it, this is awesome. It's a backpack, and it's really comfortable and was easy to to use. It's got a nice little pocket on the front, but the wheel. Just fold it up, and I did add. It has no padding, so I added some mattress pads onto it, just so it wouldn't get bumped around. But it's a cute little wheel, Oops. and it, it folds up all nice and compact. If you can see, yeah. Um, but the one bobbin fits here on the um, top of the wheel. Yeah. You might be able to skip it. There we go. There we go. I won't completely take it apart, but it's got bicycle levers on it, so that's how you, you know, set things up. You can set the maidens up. I've got the bulky maiden on right now, and you can switch that out. Um, that's an add-on piece, mm -hmm. just bulky maiden. And then you need to buy the bulky flyer, and this is the bulky... Um, the cherry. The, this that's is the, the cherry one. <laughs> and these are my... Um, terrible coils that are on here but uh and everything's interchangeable with all the other shocked parts and you can actually buy this wheel without which means that it doesn't come with this maiden head or any maiden head or the flyer instead you if you have a ladybug or a matchless you can use your pieces from there right. yes um Actually, I think the maiden okay. does come with it, but the, the flyer, the flyer and, the bobbins, and the bobbins don't. But the bobbins are plastic, which is very cool for a travel wheel. But um, yeah, just a super cute wheel. Really nice. Totally it, adjustable. You know, it's a shack product, and you just can't go wrong with those as far as I'm concerned. And the treadles fold out. The yeah. treadles fold out. The um, flyer Attaches is right here. on the back of the, the treadle. For travel. So just really convenient, easy to use. It's got a, um, I don't know what that is. Poly, poly band. band. That's the same band that the ladybug uses. Mm -hmm. okay. So if you need a replacement band, you could replace it with the ladybug band. So, and I really, band. really love my matchless. And Lynn let me spin on her sidekick on Friday because we were slackers and did our homework really late for the, um, Art yarn class. You did your homework. I did. <laughs> and then I did Lynn's homework. <laughs> homework. Because, because I was like, do homework. you need your wheel back right now? And she's like, no, no, you go ahead. <laughs> so, um, oh, it was a dream to spin. Now I need to save up for a sidekick because I really, really want one. They're lots of fun. They are. Um, 
So, aside from what I lust after, which is the sidekick. <laughs> Just in case, if anybody wants to buy me a sidekick, you know how to get it on me. <laughs> so, favorite things. My favorite thing is the sidekick. Yeah. And Lynn. Lynn is here, here this week. Yes. So, All the way from Colorado. Yes. We've been um, shuttling her back and forth between <laughs> my, my house and Laura's house. We have shared custody of Lynn. Yeah. I asked if I was going to get dropped off at a McDonald's <laughs> parking lot. <laughs> Um, but yeah, she came all the way to Denver for this class. So. To Denver? To Memphis. From, to Memphis. From Denver. From Denver. I have go. Angelina still stuck in the sweater from working on it at the workshop. <laughs> I have Dude, Angelina all over that. me. I Lynn, do too. Yeah. Lynn was picking lint off the back of my I got fiber on my back somehow. <laughs> it's pure talent. Um, so what, what other favorite things do we have? I got a present in the mail. So I did not purchase this. This was gifted to me. I want to make that very clear because I'm not buying yarn until November or fiber. And this was um, Sarah from Another Crafty Girl, who's Ponky on um, Ravelry, knew that I had had this on my favorites, Etsy favorites, for a very long time. And it just happens to be from her shop, which is Another Crafty Girl, which y'all know i made the squirtle socks out of her yarn um, one of the starving artists uh, actually it was the starving musician the purple one of that was out of her lovely erin which is actually discontinued so if you want some you better go over there right now and she sent me the wheatley colorway because i've been lusting after it and she knew i wasn't gonna buy yarn so yay she has some beautiful colors i have some pretty yarn i really like the punky booster one i do too and i love how she names her colors and she just has fabulous stuff and her she updates on mondays so if you're looking to get something fabulous, you can get it tomorrow. So that's it. That's it for me. I got that in the mail. It made me happy. Um, and Plucky Fluff was a favorite thing. Of course. of course. A lot of new techniques, and she was very enjoyable to take classes from. Mm -hmm. She's a very free spirit. She's very, like, very much an artist. Uh -huh. Like, very much that personality. So, um, I think that comes across in the interview we did with right. her. Right. Let's see. What else? We're all kind of like a little muted just because two days of all the information is kind of like dull our senses a little bit. So <laughs> We have no brain us. power left. Um, we have a giveaway. <coughs> we have we do. Vesper. We have Vesper. This pretty Vesper right here is going to a new home. Lynn offered to take it to hers. I did. She's kind that I way. I said no. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Vesper yarn, smoke on the water. We had 189 entries. I think y'all wanted Vesper more than Volmaz. It's kind of, kind of funny that way. All right, so my giveaways. It's a great colorway too. It's Let's a gorgeous see. colorway. Your giveaways. And we're using the little rafter copter thing All right. on the blog. So this is for the Vesper yarn. I'm gonna click the. There's no winner listed yet. I'm gonna click the add a winner. And the says. winner is, I feel like I should be doing a drum roll. Uh, it was Judy who left a blog post comment, and it's judymilston at hotmail.com. So, Judy, just send me an email. Actually, I can send you an email because Rafflecopter is awesome that way. So, I'm going to leave that open and not type it while I'm <laughs> recording the show. But yes, Judy, if you haven't gotten an email from me already, then just send me an email. You don't call me less at gmail.com. We'll get your prize out to you. This week's prize is some hand spun from Leslie and I. So we are giving away two of our plucky fluff things. I'm giving away my crazy bat that I made and then Navajo ply. And I have no idea on yardage about Actually, I can count plies while Leslie talks about hers. And mine is the one that I actually think I did the best on, which was the super crazy beehives. And this is about seven yards no, six times two, that was 12 yards um, of yarn, which isn't a lot, but I don't know. Maybe if you want it, you can... You could do a border. Mine's yeah, around 30 yards. Fun. You could just say you have yarn from a knit girl, I guess. I don't know. You could put it, hang it from a wall. You could. Now, are we going to do two separate drawings, or is it going to be one, dra one drawing? I think it should be two separate. Okay. You don't get to pick. We just, we're going to click the pick a winner button. Twice, apparently. Yeah. Well, let us do that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if you're interested in art yarn spun by the Knit Girls, <laughs> just go to our blog, the knitgirls3ls.com, and leave a blog post comment on this 
um, episode by the next time that we record, which will be 1920, 25th of September. How about by 11 Eastern time? Well, so it's, people have... it's midnight on the... Okay, the night before you're going to close it? Yeah. Okay, that's fine. I just like to give people a time frame. And we have buttons. We do. Button, button. Who's got the button? I do. We have <laughs> bags and bags of stash, stash buttons. Oh, I have to get up you to show get this. Because this is this is the another most awesome. fun ever. Laura and Becky designed these buttons. If you were in the stash, stash and you completed it, that's what you get. So you need to send me a PM with your address. And we will get one. Yep. And we'll get one in the mail to you. Now, these are going to the people who completed the stash dash. The, I replied to your post with a congratulations on finishing stash dash. Somewhere in that post. <laughs> there were 129? 129. Wow. That's a lot. That so, lot. PM me your address and I'll track that and take care of it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's going to be a fun trip to the yeah, post office. Yeah, that is. I'm going to let you go talk to Miss Billy. Oh, and send all she that loves stuff me. Off. There was someone, when I went to get, um, I went to the P.O. box to get checks the other day for SSK, and there was someone mailing a toy car, and they were so upset because it was costing them $35. Not like a little toy car, like a Matchbox car, like the car size that a child could would fit in. could fit into, like a refrigerator box size. And they had to try to put it on the scale, and it was actually too <laughs> tall to fit to the ceiling. And I was like, and then they didn't have tape to tape on the thing. So I went out to my car, because I always have clear packing tape in my car, and gave them tape. And it was just chaos. That's good karma that you gave them tape. Okay. Yeah. It was chaos. It was lots of fun, though. It was so I could get the cashier's check from Canada, which was so cool. <laughs> you learn something new every day about yeah. how stuff works. Um, okay, so SSK, um, I don't want to talk too much about it because a lot of people that wanted to get in didn't get in, but we are still pulling people from the wait list because, you know, things have come up and everybody that registered, you know, or some people are having issues and have to back out. So we are still pulling people from the wait list, so don't give up hope if you're on the wait list. Um, we pulled like four people last week, I think. Well, we pulled like seven people last week. Oh, really? Yeah. Um, and we expect that. I mean, things come up. Oh, so. yeah, Definitely. Um, We're asking you to plan out nine months ahead of time. But so if you did get a note that you got in and you haven't already sent your payment, you need to do that very, very soon because payments are due no later than a week from Tuesday. And um, if you're mailing it, then it needs to already be out. Um, if you're doing it via PayPal, which costs us a little bit more in fees, um, and that's but if that's the way you're comfortable with, that's fine. Um, there's a link on the website, and the password to get in was sent in your original email. Is there yep. anything else for us this kind? Um, After registration, we'll have teacher information up, and we'll have a questionnaire if you have a certain person you want a room with, or all that will happen after. There is an SSK group. It is Super Summer Knitaway. If you search for that, you can find it there. I did a contest there yeah, over the past one week, contest. so one contest, and there will be Lots of random contests and getting to know you threads and knit-alongs and fun times. Possibly a swap. Possibly a swap. We typically do a swap when we mm -hmm. do stuff like Urban. this. Um, I don't know. Lots of fun stuff. Yes. Lots of fun stuff. Um, and very soon we'll be announcing a spin-along for the Knit Girls group. Because we had a really good time in the last yes. one. And saw some great stuff. So we're going to reach out to a couple of vendors on... Uh, dyeing the fiber, and we'll announce something in the next couple weeks. Yep. That's about it. We've been talking over you. Do you have anything awesome to add to this? I... No? No. You're out of awesome? <laughs> I'm out of awesome. <laughs> Used up all my awesome this weekend. At the plucky fluff. I was very impressed with how you embraced all of the out-of-the-box techniques. And I was impressed with you as well. <laughs> I expected you to break out in hives at some point, and I were rocking in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> make it stop, make it stop. There were but points, there were, were some things good. that I wasn't comfortable with. But, but you tried them yeah, and yeah. no, you did well. So it was it a fun was weekend. Fun. Yeah. Always enjoy because you always learn something. Oh yeah. Always. 
I think the course bending was enough reason to take the class. Oh yeah, really. definitely. Well, I really just think the that. technique, you know, just learning how to control yeah, the different, yeah. you, you think more about how you create your yarn than just trying to create a perfect. Yeah. And where you create your yarn. Yes. Like how close to the orifice or far away, yes. depending on what you're doing. And Which, how much tension or lack of tension and just lots of little techniques. We, we got really to have see the new uh, wheel, the new Modricroft wheel, which was yes. one that um, Lexi helped design. And she runs us through that in the interview. Mm -hmm. So that's lots of fun. And that's so, about it, I think. I think it is. I think that's it for this week. Um, yeah. We can find us on all the regular spots. If you want a friend, Lynn, you can. <laughs> on Clark, you're a Lynn's out. Everywhere you're a Lynn's out. I'm Lynn's in pretty everywhere. much everywhere. And if you are a spinner or want to take the spinning class at SSK, send me a PM or I could even start a thread on the SSK. They're going to do sign up things. But well, I'm just saying for the class as I put the curriculum together. Oh, you guys okay. have ideas on anything specific. Anything specific you want to learn. You know, I'm still working on what I'm going to teach. So okay. um, definitely interested in hearing what people want to learn. And Lynn's going to teach both spindling and Wheel spinning, wheel spinning. Wheel spinning. And yes. we'll we'll have some wheels there. Like you can you can spin on my ladybug. I'm, I'm gonna give up control. <laughs> um or on uh, whatever other wheels may be in our houses. It's <laughs> <laughs> in our job at that time. Um mom's volunteered the Kromsky Sonata. So it's also gonna be a good opportunity to try out different right. wheels. And I'll as bring well. my sidekick, so Yeah. Leslie might have a live sidekick. In my room. <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, I think that's it. So I think we'll um, see you again next week. Unfortunately, we have to let Lynn go back home. But I'm sure the kitties will be grateful. Yes, my girls will be home. very happy to be to have me home. Yeah. So I guess until next week, have a good one. Bye, y'all.